This video provides instruction for how to fashion wound infusion catheters from medical grade polyethylene tubing. You will need three specialty items for this. The polyethylene tubing, stub adapters, and ethylene oxide gas sterilization packs. We use the Intramedic brand of medical polyethylene tubing, part number 427421. This product has an internal diameter of 0.034 inches and an external diameter of 0.05 inches and as of July 2018 was available from several vendors online in 100 foot rolls for about $326. To adapt the tubing to a syringe you will also need to purchase lure stub adapters. We use the Intramedic brand of this as well. A 20 gauge adapter will fit into the polyethylene tubing and they come as individually wrapped units in a box of 100 for about $250. The sterilization packs we use are the Steris Visual part number 866-800. The remaining materials you need include gloves, a ruler, scissors, a cigarette lighter, a 3 mil syringe, an insulin syringe with a 27 gauge or smaller needle, and a Sharpie marking pen. The first step is to cut some tubing to the desired length. The two dimensions to consider are the total length of the catheter and its working length, which is the portion of the tube that will contain the drug delivery fenestrations. In general, you will want a range of working lengths from 2 inches up to about 10 inches. Longer working lengths will result in uneven drug distribution and should be avoided. You will also want enough non-fenestrated catheter length between the stub adapter and the first fenestration to create adequate room for tunneling the device between the point of entry in the skin and the area where anesthesia is desired. In this example, we are cutting tubing to 12 inches total length and our working length will be 4 inches. After cutting the tubing, the next step is to attach, attach the stub adapter. The metal portion of the adapter is heated in the cigarette lighter flame for about one second and then inserted into one end of the tubing. Polyethylene is nice to work with because the heated stub adapter will slide into the tubing easily and then bond with the, the tubing as it cools, forming a tight connection. Next we need to seal the end of the catheter. Here again, the polyethylene tubing is nice to work with because you can put the catheter end directly into the flame for a second or so and then use your gloved hand to pinch the softened material together to form a tight seal. This seal must be tested by connecting the empty 3 mil syringe and then attempting to inject about a mil of air into the tubing. The plunger should spring back to its original position. If it does not, there is a leak in the system, most likely at the sealed end of the catheter, in which case it will need to be reheated and sealed again. Once a complete seal is confirmed, fenestration holes are created using the insulin, insulin syringe and needle. To do this, we note the desired location of the first fenestration closest to the lure stub adapter by measuring the working surface length on a, with the ruler and creating the first pairs of hole, holes at that site. The needle is stuck into the center of the tubing through both sides beginning about 5 millimeters from the sealed end and spaced every 2 to 5 millimeters across the entire length of the desired working surface. Ideally, the tubing should be rotated slightly between each set of holes so the holes are not all oriented in the same plane. Here is a scanning electron microscope image of a fenestration created with a 27 gauge needle. As you can see, these holes are very ragged and irregular and are partially obstructed by a flap of the polyethylene tubing material. This is actually important because we want a high amount of resistance to flow at each fenestration site to help ensure equal distribution of the material across its entire working length. Here is a demonstration of liquid distribution. As you can see, there are liquid droplets forming at every fenestration. Do not test your tubing this way prior to sterilization as it is best to keep your patient tubing completely dry for that process. Polyethylene tubing must be gas sterilized as it will melt with autoclave heat. 
We mark the packaging with the total length, the working surface length, the date created, and the initials of the person who made the catheter. These may then be stocked in your surgical area and retrieved on an as-needed basis. Have fun with these.